But what's fascinating about jazz, uh, this, this, was, um, um, this, this was brought to my attention by a little article in English Teaching Professionals, in my interest. Um, what's fascinating about jazz is, is that they, someone has gone to the trouble, apparently this was published in the Macmillan Dictionary of Jazz in 1994, someone has gone to the trouble of analyzing recordings of famous jazz players of the 20th century. And what they find is that every great jazz player has about a hundred licks or, or little licks of music that they repeat. And the lick is just a little bit or something. Or something. They, and they have about a hundred of these which come back again and again and again and again and again. Though, of course, because they're improvising not in the same order or in the same place or necessarily at the same volume and things like that. But these licks, these little musical licks, little fragments of music come back again and again and again, round and round and round and round. And the writer of this, this, this is only about one page article in ETP, the writer of this article suggests that jazz licks are very like lexical chunks. That if you actually analyze the conversation of a competent speaker of language, you will find the same lexical chunks coming back and back and back and back, though not necessarily in the right order. I'm start to get I didn't, I got that completely wrong. Though not necessarily in the same order. Uh, one other, one other story I have to tell you, um, and if you were to have this year, you, you, uh, you came to think I did this story, you've heard this before, but my brother is a language teacher, he's a very good language teacher, he's, he's, um, his, his speciality is teaching proficiency, that's the level, and he's got, anyway, he is a teacher at the moment for reasons which I won't go into, um, and, and what he was doing instead, and he's just returned, is for six months he and his partner have been um, messing around in Spain um, in a campervan and staying on campus, like having the one, most wonderful time in their lives, and they deserve it for all sorts of reasons. Anyway, he rang me up from Spain uh, two or three months ago, and he said, hi, Philip, hi, Jeremy, how is you? He said, I said, how's your Spanish getting on? Because he, he's never studied Spanish, but he's now spent quite a few months hanging around in Spain. He said, it's going really, really well. He said, it's going really well. Do you know what I've discovered? He said, I've discovered that you know, when, I, when, I, when, I really need to, when I need to do something, when I need to explain something, I find the words, and then I really learn them. Yeah. He's a language teacher. He knows this stuff, but he had this blinding insight, this blinding insight that, and, and actually that's what happens to all of us, a blinding insight that guess what the best way of learning something is? It's to really need it. And if you really need it, then you'll learn it, and then you can go and say, uh, you whatever it is you want. You, but you have to need it. You have to want it and need it, and then you'll learn. 